Good morning, uh, dear educators, to our third webinar for 2020-21 academic year. We're ha very happy to see uh, you again, some of you and some you're welcome for the first time and you're welcome to join always to all our webinars. Uh, we want to thank especially this webinar hosted by the Great Educational Hub, Huang Kwan Village, who is always one of the pillars of the sacred mission of education. We want to thank our great speakers, great educators, Mr. Fuad Sila and Ms. Aline Nassim. And today's topic is going to be one subject called knowledge. Why one subject called knowledge? Before we start, let me just give you some uh, basics. It's going to less about the webinar, one hour, 35 minutes. You can post your questions via Zoom chat and we'll do our best to answer them all. There will be a question and answer session at the word of the presentation. And please make sure everyone you are on mute mode so that we can hear each other and we can uh, enjoy the webinar. Da Vinci once said, to develop a complete mind, study the science of art, study the art of science, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. When we say the science of art and art of science, we are combining all subjects together. Da Vinci said that about 500, 600, 300, 400 years ago. And today we need to see that at that time already, he was talking about connecting everything to everything because in real life, we have one knowledge. We have a group of skills developing that knowledge. And that's why I'm going to give the microphone now to Miss Aline to start for us and explaining why we must demolish the famous wall between us and the students. Please, Ms. Aline. Thank you, Mr. John, for the introduction. Good morning, fellow educators. It's a privilege for me to be here again with the team. I mean, last time I missed it. This time I'm here fully recovered. It's uh, very crucial for us to demolish the wall. But wh which wall are we talking about? Which wall is, is the obstruction or the ob obstacle in education? Now, if we look closely at what we deliver nowadays, even though we're, we're living in a 21st century um, era or time, education during this period of time is still using practices of the previous centuries. And thus the wall is still there. So for example, what are some of the things that this wall is built on? What are the fundamentals of this wall that we need to get rid of? First of all, teacher-centered classrooms. And this is something we need to get rid of. This is part of the wall. Education used to be only based on subjects instead of streams or projects that combine real life situations. Books used to guide our curriculum. They are still, unfortunately. We are only delivering knowledge. We're not, we're not focusing on skills. These are all traces of the previous way of education. Differentiation, yes, we talk a lot about it, but how much are we implementing it? This was part and is still part of the war. What about only summative assessments to base our evaluations on? No collaborative planning previously. And unfortunately, we do talk about it again, but still we cannot see um, tangible proof that it's there. Real, based, real life based education uh, based on different subjects. Subjects are only subjects taught, nothing is intertwined, nothing is integrated. This is part of the world that we really need to get rid of. Students, all we, we used to do is have them memorize. We transformed them into memorizing machines, unfortunately. We have to get rid of that. Demolishing the wall means demolishing these practices. We have to facilitate instead of teach. Positive reinforcement, completely absent. Previously, in our previous webinar, which I wasn't present in, the discussion was about classroom without borders, while now we still have our students confined between these borders. Previously, there was no partnership, mutual partnership between school and parents. School is considered our second, learner's second home. So if it's home, then definitely parents should have part in such education. For us to demolish the wall, definitely we have to create a hole because we cannot just go there and say everything should be shattered. This is procedural. It's 
It, it's gradual. It takes step after step. One of those major, most important steps is facilitating instead of teaching. As we said earlier, again, we have to base our learning on real life situations and scenarios because this is what we're preparing our students or our learners for. And for us to conduct real life based learning, our students must acquire these, the, uh, the strategy of how to target these four W's and one H, why, how, when, what, and where. Our aim should be for high benchmark of horizontal integration because our ultimate goal is to get to one subject called knowledge. We're not only teaching our learners one subject because in real life, one subject only cannot solve our real life problems. We have to also nurture the 21st century lifelong learner traits, which I'll discuss later in further details with life skills. And this all will be reflected no, from as an educator, as a facilitator, and they will acquire it and re-reflect it again. Redefining our differentiated instructional Based on one subject called knowledge, definitely it has to be governed by IT or AI because we all live in a technological era. How can we do the facilitating? What is the framework? that we have to depend on, or we have to base our facilitating, not teaching pedagogical approach. Well, we have to create the 21st century lifelong learner. For that purpose, what should we have? What should be in our framework? As we said earlier, student-centered classroom with real life based inquiry-based projects, and those student-centered classrooms shouldn't be confined between the borders of the classroom alone. This was discussed earlier in, in the previous webinar and we do um, highly um, recommend you go back and visit it on YouTube um, to, to get to the purpose of having or establishing and enhancing classrooms without borders, nothing fits more than eff efficient extra and co-curricular pedagogical uh, layers within our curriculum. For us to create or instill in our learners the 21st century learner profile, that they have to get it from us. We reflect it. Um, we, rep we represent the hidden curriculum. All this is done for what purpose? To get to the one subject called knowledge, which is based on big, major, and minor ideas uh, that we came up with due to collaborative planning. Ultimately, from the multi-layered curriculum. Of course, we should never forget the touch of IT and AI. And in our future upcoming webinar, we'll be discussing further the same um, uh, approach. In addition to this, we will also be discussing the five pillars of differentiation and how we can have our learners to become student, server, student, student servant leaders. And all this is created because of their own targeting of the topics, one subject called knowledge, solving problems, creating and solving problems. We spoke a lot about facilitator profile, reflecting and reinforcing the role model lifelong learner profile for our 21st century learners. So what are we talking about? As facilitators, we reflect the hidden curriculum which is uh, monitored or governed by differentiation by emotion. And our learners take this from us as a reflection and then they re-reflect it back. So what are these traits that we're talking about? Please, let's make sure everyone is on mute mode, please. So we can hear Ms. Aline. Thank you very much. Let's make sure everyone is on mute mode, please. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Aline, continue, please. So what are these traits that we're focusing on that we as facilitators should be reflecting so that our learners can grasp and later re-reflect? For example, kind, being kind and compassionate, caring, having excellent communication skills with our students, 
being, uh, being passionate for our, our learners and for the process of facilitating, setting high expectations, being fair, having this strong rapport between us and them, having an engaging personality and facilitating style, setting clear objectives based on the, multi, on the knowledge of multi-layered curriculum and its standards. Now, if we look at all these, where would we get management problem in the classroom? No more. Discipline problem, no more. Because it's a mutual relationship built between us and our learners, all because of our facilitating style. For us to get such a learner, of course, this was also highlighted in our previous webinar, and we are going to go through it briefly. We aim to have our learners becoming creative and innovative. Again, for the 21st century, we need them to become innovative and principled leaders. And for that, we have a model structured here, which doesn't only show what the learner is doing within himself. Yes, he becomes an independent learner. Yes, he becomes critically and a, a critical and positive thinker, a person who, who solves problem in an innovative manner, he likes to explore, but this is not only to the self. We also notice that he becomes inspired and, and a communicative inquirer. He develops an international mindset, loving environment and culture and art, always targeting solutions and problems with a team spirit. He doesn't or she doesn't approach anything selfishly or individually, caring about health and the well-being of everyone else, and also an adventurer who always likes to explore and discover new things. This is our ultimate, ultimate goal when we talk about one subject called knowledge, because we're preparing our students to become principal leaders during this century. To accomplish this, again, we shouldn't neglect the fact of the major factor that was part of the wall, teacher-centered classrooms. Our classroom should be student-centered. Now, yes, it's difficult. Yes, we all agree. But with little effort and changing our mindset bit by bit, collaborating with others to share best practices, we will deliver and we will accomplish this. Student-centered classrooms. We as facilitators, we only help in having the students take control. We shouldn't be puppeteers anymore. They are not our puppets. They have their own individual and original and unique mind. And we have to let go to their capabilities. Student collaborate in streams project, streams projects, where everything is based on inquiry-based learning, dealing with real life problems, they all act together with this motto in, in mind, all for one, one for all. Thus, they come with creative and innovative ideas. Differentiation definitely is there because each one talks from his own um, perspective or interest or capabilities. Now, if we have such a classroom, what else should we look for? Isn't this something ideal we all look up to? What is the idea behind Streams Project? inquiry-based learning, with which we are highly focusing on. Well, as we see, those subjects that we teach right now and have been taught forever since are the ones that this acronym comes from. Yet, if we have to have our projects only focusing on one technology, I will never have one problem in real life that deals only with technology, we definitely find that it is also integrated with many other subjects here. So that's why our projects in our classroom from now on, let's put it as a, let's set it as a target, should have at least three of these integrated to form a streams project and prepare our students for real life inquiry based learning. In addition to this, what is the framework for our one subject called knowledge, which is the 
title of our webinar today. As we've mentioned, it's based on big major minor ideas which we collaboratively came up with. Now, if we follow the sequence of this framework, we have our multi-layered curriculum, then the yearly plan, then the unit plan, and then the weekly plan. But in all these, we always have the horizontal integration, which is introduced and explained. Now, collaborative planning doesn't only happen between us facilitators. The students get involved in this, and this is something Mr. Fuad will be dealing with after my part. Now, what are these big and major minor ideas we're talking about? They are based from real life situations. We, we pose a question and then we try our best. For my big idea, I should have at least five subjects integrated so that I can solve this question with my learners. In a major idea, I should have at least three subjects integrated and for the minor, two subjects integrated. Now, these timetables are not fixed and rigid. They are to be changed and updated, modified monthly or every six weeks. In this way, we ensure that we have our students ready and prepared for this century. Now, I leave the stage and the mic for Mr. Fuad and he will talk us more, tell us more details about the fundamentals. Thank you, Ms. Ali. Thank you, Mr. John. Again, hello, everyone. Uh, dear fellow educators. Um, what I'm going to discuss with you now are some of the uh, fundamentals. Well, Ms. Arina has already listed uh, the, the most, not the most, but the important things that we need to tackle in order to demolish the wall, the metaphorical wall. But let me remind you of the following fundamentals, which are not only applicable to one subject called knowledge, but to all of our uh, educational practices. First and foremost, we should not just change the label of, by which we, we, we refer to ourselves or others refer to us from teachers to facilitators. We need to change our mindset from the mindset of being teachers to the mindset of being facilitators. But facilitators of what? We, as facilitators, should facilitate the acquisition of knowledge and skills, and at the same time, facilitate the development of attitudes and values in our students. The second fundamental point, curriculum classroom differentiation. Differentiation nowadays is, is, is non-negotiable in, in education. However, we often find ourselves uh, uh, um, sometimes maybe, I don't wanna say frustrated, but you know, we find it very difficult to differentiate every single class. You know, we might do it every now and then, but in order to, to, to be able to differentiate uh, in every single class, we need to have a certain framework, a certain model that you can always refer to. And that model is the CC differentiation model, curriculum classroom differentiation. In simple terms, in order to differentiate uh, in our classes, in each and every of our classes, we should begin by having a differentiated curriculum, something I'll get to in the following slide. Hence the term curriculum, a classroom differentiation. Next, classroom without borders, the topic of the previous uh, webinar. In the 21st century, this is the indispensable environment for learning and facilitating. Sitting within the confinements of, of, of a classroom for hours and hours and hours. I mean, even we as adults sometimes, you know, get, get frustrated from that. Imagine how, 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 how children would feel. Plus, if we are to base all of our, edu our educational practices on, on, on real uh, life based um, scenarios, you know, the, the, the environment should, should reflect or should be aligned with what we are teaching. And uh, the last point uh, in this slide, students input. 
how how often do we really do we really even allow our students to express themselves clearly or how often do we listen to them why should we even listen to our students i mean why do we to, to even bother we are the facilitators we are the experts well the following should 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 the following sentence should make it very clear if we listen to our students and not just listen to them but ask for their input they will make our facilitating mission much easier how because through their input they will highlight their learning preferences when they do that eventually we will get to or we will achieve a really student based class another fundamental point real life based education however this is so important that it, it needed uh, to be discussed in, in, in one slide. As Ms. Aline mentioned in, uh, at the very beginning of, of this uh, webinar, sadly, 21st century education still uses practices of previous centuries, not just the 20th century, but even previous centuries. If we are to, to base our learning and facilitating education on real life based, Think of the following. When faced with an issue in real life, and when I say we, I mean human beings, you know, of all ages, of all walks of life. Um, and when we are faced with a real issue in, in uh, uh, real life, uh, an issue in real life, we do not resort to our intellect, to our knowledge, to our skills in bits and pieces. We do not say, think of it only from the perspective of mathematics and then only from the perspective of science or only from the perspective of knowledge. No, that's not how it happens in, in, our, in our lives. We subconsciously and involuntarily, well, our accumulated knowledge is put to work to deal with the matter at hand. That's how things happen in real life. We all experience that. So if education is supposed to groom youngsters, the learners, to become well-equipped adults, one day that can successfully handle real life situations. Logically, logically, if you're to prepare someone to handle real life situations, how do you groom them? How do you prepare them to deal with such situations? Well, you base your educational practices, you base your uh, uh, facilitating approach, you, pay, you base your instructional strategies, the whole thing, you base it on real life based scenario. In other words, you want to prepare someone to deal with real life situations. Well, you train them, you uh, uh, prepare them to, to do that by using real life based scenarios. Hence, the importance of real life based education. Now, what is one subject called knowledge? The topic of today's webinar. It is not a new educational strategy, it's not a new uh, educational method or technique or, or approach. No, 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 no. It is an entirely different system of education altogether that is based on and in aligned with the requirements of the 21st century, the, the educational requirements of the 21st century. Now, where did this term or this notion or this concept of one subject uh, called knowledge come from? Well, it is based on and inspired by, again, it's based on and inspired by, it's not uh, uh, a carbon copy of the, the, the Finnish uh, curriculum integration model. Now, Finland's experience with education continues to be a source of inspiration and, and admiration to, to, to researchers and, 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 and educators around the world. Among many other things, the uh, this a curriculum integration model of Finland stresses specifically on the following, real life based education, horizontal integration, decentralization of curricular development and continuous revision and updating. And I'll discuss these two points together. By decentralization of curricular development, uh, they mean that the educational authority uh, in the country would, yes, put together some general uh, standards that 
uh, it expects um, students to meet and expects facilitators to facilitate. However, however, those are not, those are so general and, and that is done on, uh, on purpose because they want local authorities and even individual schools to use those say general guidelines that are put by the country's educational authorities and adopt them and in order to make sure that they are suitable, they, 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 they match the requirements of their individual students at the local level. And they, of course, stress continuous revision and updating, you know, based on research, based on, you know, say you, you, you put a certain, uh, uh, put together a certain uh, uh, or certain curricula for your school, and then a year later or a couple of years later, you find out that that needs revision and updating. This is what the, in, obviously in a nutshell, what the Finnish curriculum integration model is. Now, since one of the uh, fundamentals of the Finnish curriculum integration model is horizontal integration, one subject called knowledge takes horizontal integration to a new dimension altogether. It's not your traditional horizontal integration as you'll see, and ultimately it makes our students apt for today and ready for tomorrow. I mentioned earlier the curriculum classroom differentiated model. As I said, in order to eventually get to a differentiated classroom or a differentiated class, we need to, to start with a differentiated curriculum. Hence the multi-layered curriculum, which uh, we discussed in details in the previous uh, webinar. And the multi-layered curriculum, which should be adapted or should be developed uh, um, um, locally. By locally, I mean at uh, each school, because each school, each school students have their own needs, have their own, uh, um, they're unique basically. And then we move from the differentiated curriculum to differentiated yearly plans. And from those, we can generate BMMI timetables. BMMI stands for big major and minor ideas, which in a nutshell are real life based themes. Moving along from the uh, uh, differentiated curriculum, differentiated yearly plans, we get to the differentiated unit plans. And from those, we can generate big ideas via collaborative planning. A step further, we get to differentiated weekly plans where we can generate major and minor ideas again via collaborative planning, ultimately getting to differentiated classes, which the, 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 the best example of which are classrooms without borders. Throughout this uh, uh, process, always, always keep in mind, as I, as I said earlier, we need to change our mindset. We should be facilitating and not teaching. We should think of ourselves as facilitators and not teachers. And of course, students' input is a must at every single stage of this model. Now this extended CC differentiated model taken all together would ultimately lead to effective implementation of one subject called knowledge. Uh, a quick reminder of uh, what the multi-layered curriculum uh, is. Again, I discussed it in details in the previous webinar. This is a, excuse me, just a reminder. It's 13 layers. Of course, I can never stress this enough. Students input, listen to them because they really can, can and do make our life easier our mission, our sacred mission of education easier. So uh, then I, uh, we had mentioned the BMMI timetables, big major minor ideas timetables. Let me show you first a, a typical, a typical timetable, right? Where uh, subjects are allocated uh, certain uh, um, places on those timetables, you know? To move from a traditional timetable to a BMMI timetable in line with or as, as, as 
the concept, the very concept of one subject called knowledge would require, we should get rid of subjects. Hence, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, there are no longer, there are no longer subjects. Instead, there's just BMMI, big major minor ideas. And, and then you can see in red, the venues, different venues where those, let's say, sessions would take place. Now the venues would explicitly reveal what the subject is. For example, if you look at the last two periods of the first day of the week, it says that uh, uh, in the BMMI timetable that those last two periods are gonna take place at the gymnasium. Obviously that means that it's a PE, that those two periods are uh, a PE periods. However, again, we, just like we need to change our mindset, we also need to change the student's mindset into uh, not just believing, but experiencing that there, is no, there are no uh, different subjects or individual subjects. There's just one subject called knowledge. Okay, so these big major and minor ideas, how do we develop them? As I mentioned earlier, we develop them through or via uh, a collaborative plan. Now, Collaborative planning takes place at two levels, interdepartmental and interdepartmental. Obviously, as you can see in front of you, interdepartmental planning refers to collaborative planning in which facilitators of different subjects would meet and work on a, a, a horizontal integration. On the other hand, in an interdepartmental meeting, facilitators of the same subject would meet and work on vertical integration. In those two models, again and again and again, students' input is indispensable. So first, let's focus on the big ideas. I said that the big ideas come from the, or are generated uh, at intradepartmental meetings and then using the big idea or the big ideas generated there and the output of interdepartmental meetings, we would get the major and minor ideas. Next, I'll share with you a, a, a real example. By real, I mean an example that we have actually uh, uh, implemented at my previous school in the UAE and take you through the, the, the steps uh, that we follow to generate big ideas and major and minor ideas eventually. As you can see in front of you, <clears throat> here we have five typical uh, uh, school subjects, social studies, ICT, English, PE, and science. Just uh, for the sake of uh, time constraints, I will share with you the unit summaries of, uh, uh, of course, obviously, when, when you have uh, uh, facilitators of different subjects meeting, you get horizontal integration. I'll share with you the unit summaries of uh, uh, that students were going to learn the following weeks when that took place, the unit summaries of each subject. For instance, the social studies unit was about, again, as a summary, was, it was going to be about energy, its sources and uses, and the UAE's clean energy projects. ICT, well, the ICT unit was going to be the internet, its terminology, technology, and advance, advancement in the internet, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of social media. In uh, English, well, the unit was going to be about informative texts, the comprehension uh, uh, skills were going to be uh, drawing inferences, making generalizations. Present perfect tense was the uh, grammar uh, of that unit, and word roots was the vocabulary section of that unit. PE, uh, the unit summary of the PE was the benefits of exercising and actually uh, doing cardio exercises. The fifth um, element or the fifth uh, contribution was from the science uh, facilitator, the unit of which was about the chemical and physical properties of water and human body 
and water. Now, the facilitators came with their unit, with their unit plan, sat together, and after a long discussion, you know, everyone has had his or her uh, ideas in mind and, and input and so on. Eventually, they came up with the following big idea, the following question, how can we save our natural resources, which is sort of Again, they came up with this. It was not dictated by the administration. It's a real life based idea. And based on their units, they uh, uh, decided that this is a great umbrella, sort of speak, for their units, all their units. Okay, so now that the big idea was generated using the, 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 the units or the input from five different uh, subjects. The big idea is there. As I said, in order to come up with the major and minor ideas, you need the big idea as well as the output of interdepartmental meetings where you would focus on vertical integration. So we have the big idea then we need to cascade those, uh, uh, that big idea down into major and minor ideas. I'll take you through one subject at a time. Regarding social studies, uh, the, if you refer to what the unit was about and the big idea, you, you should see the, the, the logical sequence of how using those two, the facilitator was able to generate the major ideas, the major idea of how critical is the need to use clean energy in order to save the UAE's natural resources. Then the minor ideas, why is the UAE and uh, the MENA area launching nuclear energy uh, plants? And to what extent is the UAE's nuclear energy plant uh, risk-free? This is uh, sort of an example uh, real life based uh, example of vertical integration. So we've achieved horizontal as well as vertical integration. Moving to ICT, again, following the same uh, 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 method, what the content of the unit is, what the big idea is, the major and the minor ideas that were developed were, how is technology helping the world becoming green? How does technology affect sustainability and how to spread awareness about using natural resources wisely. For instance, the second point in the minor ideas, you, you should be able to connect it to the second point in the unit, social media. Moving to English, you can see the, the, the summary of the unit and the big idea, the major and the minor ideas that were developed were where are natural resources located and used around the world? What are the effects of their uh, extraction, harvesting, and use. Minor idea, what makes natural resources valuable and what are the effects of natural resource uh, extraction? Now, students used uh, uh, what the, 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 the skills that they had acquired from analysis of informative texts, drawing inferences, and so on, the, what the unit uh, uh, was about, to actually write a, a, a piece on those uh, major and minor ideas. Moving to PE, unit plan, big idea, cascading it down. How can saving uh, fuel by using public transportation contribute to a healthier heart? Minor ideas, is there an association between lack of outdoor activities and physical inactivity? And can we make some PE equipment by recycling items found near water body? Moving to science. The, the unit was about the chemical and physical properties of water and the human body and water. The big idea was how can we save our natural resources? Major idea that was developed was how can we use less water from our natural resources? And the minor ideas were how is fresh water produced in the UAE using chemical and physical means? And what is the water content of food? Even if you look at just like the big idea is a real life based theme or concept, so are the major and the minor ideas. They are also real life based uh, uh, ideas in which 
there was vertical integration, uh, horizontal integration, as well as <clears throat> one of the uh, layers of the multi-layered curriculum, which is the, the, the countries, wherever the country that you're, you're, you're located at, the country, taking everything into the context of the country that you're in. Um, that is, uh, that's it for me from now. I'll now uh, give the microphone back uh, to Ms. Ali. Thank you all for uh, listening attentively. Thank you, Mr. Fuad, for walking us through the fundamentals of one subject world knowledge. Now, yes, it's a very new concept, but with time and with right implementation, everything fits in place, just like a puzzle. For now, we're going to discuss again, we're going to go briefly into um, different um, approaches or strategies in differentiation, because this specifically will be discussed in details in our future webinars. We are all familiar of differentiation through or by process, product, and content. Last webinar, it was discussed differentiation by environment, which we, um, which it was discussed in details that it includes classrooms without borders. And today, briefly, we walk through differentiation by emotion when we mention the learner profile as a reflection of the hidden curriculum through the facilitator. So how could this all apply in, in uh, promoting the one subject called knowledge and building the personality of our learners. Well, first of all, we cannot differentiate in our classroom if we do not differentiate our curriculum. Therefore comes the, the concept of the multi-layered curriculum and one subject called knowledge. Now these differentiated instructional strategies that we need to implement they, they make or they shape our facilitating work. Again, I'm gonna go through them quickly because in our future webinar, each one of those will be discussed with further details. For example, if we look at the first one, which is the fun illusion approach, and simply this is fun illusion. Hmm? It includes <laughs> For example, we notice what Maria Montessori said. Students will not listen to you the moment they feel that you are teaching them. But have you ever tried going to the classroom and implementing different games? How would the environment of the class look like? How would you feel the effectiveness of the, of the engagement and interactive interactiveness of them? Wouldn't it make our uh, lessons much easier and faster with less effort to control and manage. So let's start using and implementing fun illusion approach in order to get more effective lessons. The second, of course, um, mo one of the most essential layers in um, one subject called knowledge is where the student themselves do the inquiry because they have real based life, real life based projects, the streams project. Of course, we as facilitators, we only have to play the role of facilitators. We're not, as I said before, if I said it before, but I'll repeat it, we're not puppeteers. We do not control our students. We guide them. We guide them through questions. We guide them through planning, but they do the inquiry. They do the collaborative think, the collaborative work. They do the critical thinking. As we said, we nurture in our students the learner profile traits of the 21st century. And in this way, we take them to the next level for this time of history. The E3RR milieu, which ideally creates or manages the student-centered classroom instead of the teacher-centered classroom, along with a fun approach or fun illusion approach uh, strategy. Of course, we all know that we have our students explore the topic we're introducing, they experience it with their inquiry, and then at the end, evaluation happens. Now, evaluation happens within them by themselves, peer evaluation, and us also evaluate. And based on it, we get to either reinforce or reward. Both of them should be done through passion, relevance, and attitude, the PRA. 
This is also to be discussed in our future webinars. One of the most important factors also in differentiation is this baby, the baby and the cup approach or strategy. Now we all know that usually when we start teaching our learners, we start with basic facts. And when we mention babies here or a baby, we mention our learners since it's their first acquisition of that fact. For example, um, we introduce the concept or the fact of a cup. And then the baby learns that the cup is used for drinking. But later on, the baby is not satisfied because he wants to know now, he wants to experiment, he wants to experience, explore and experience. How can he use this cup? So our learners also will apply the same, same inquiry or will have the same inquisition. They would like to also try how to use those different facts. Again, those facts could be found in different shapes and different forms, and they would be implemented in different situations. So just like this, the cups are available in different colors, sizes, and shapes. And the baby comes to realize the existence of these concepts. Therefore, the baby comes to realize that we are not only uh, supposed to drink if ever we wanna drink only from a cup, no matter what its color is. Sometimes we use another container to drink. Therefore, we're just ex extending the idea now. The fact is not only limited to one cup. And with this, when we get to the final stage where everything is being encom encompassed by our learner, he could make his own decisions. He would create his own decisions. We will not dictate it from him. He's free to choose how to implement it, which skill to use, whether this concept is fit here or not. The bonus thinking, six thinking hats, one of the best. It all relies on how to use our thinking capabilities. Now, if we notice most of them, five of them focus on different ways of learning. And the one which I personally favor most is the black one, the black hat the devil's advocate, the one who always objects, the one who poses the problem, the one who creates the problems. And this is an essential factor in the thinking facts because everyone collaborates in order to come up with the best solution for this real life problem. So therefore we go back to the concept of, they do the inquiry, they do the research, and they come up with a, with a creative solution one for all, all for one, in one subject called knowledge. So as we said, this is one of the best. And now that we've gone through briefly the differentiated uh, strat strategies, I'll leave the mic to Mr. John, and he will give us real life examples of how to deliver one subject called knowledge within our classes. Thank you, Ms. Aline. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fuad. Uh, dear colleagues, so one subject called knowledge, how can we deliver that in our classrooms? As Mr. Fuad explained the details, Ms. Ali explained the details for you. I'm going to go through now with uh, instructional strategies that we molded specially, specially created so that we can go, we can reach uh, with those strategies to one subject called knowledge. The first one is called W4H. Our students always ask us, why do I need to acquire this knowledge and skills, dear teacher? But of course, today we are facilitators, no more teachers. The second question, when can I use it to enhance my life? The third question, how am I going to use this knowledge and skills to improve my life? The fourth question, when do I need to use this knowledge and skills that I acquired today? And the fifth and the one of the most important questions, what are the different facts and skills and concepts and principles and dispositions related to this knowledge? So how this uh, instruction strategy is called the W4H strategy and we have a real life example about it. And let's say we're teaching grade seven, grade eight students parallel circuits, physics, science, okay? So we're going to see how by one, how we're going to answer those four questions to our students one by one. First, why do I need to acquire this knowledge and skills? Of course, dear student, you need to acquire this knowledge and skills to manage and control your house appliances and power outlets. 
because number two, there are two types of thinking in life. There's the serious thinking, you go task by task, and there's a multitasking thinking, which is a pair of thinking. You need that too to manage and optimize your decisions, your life. So you see, um, I am linking 100%, number one, my class to real life based learning to the concept of one subject called knowledge, because the moment I link whatever I am facilitating to my students to real life base, automatically will understand that whatever he's learning today, it's knowledge, it's skills that he's going to use to improve his life. The second question, where can I use it to enhance my life? In all your environment, your student, to understand and fix a lot of electrical appliances in your daily life. To, in this, to enhance your spirit thinking skills in all matters to versus to series-based thinking skills. Number three, how am I going to use this knowledge and skills to improve my life? You're okay, no problem. I would answer you, dear student. You increase your critical thinking, your creative skills, and engineering skills to create different types of electrical devices that will make your life easier. Creativity, innovation. You can sell those devices and gain some extra cash. Okay, great. Now the students are becoming happy slowly. Number two, you can optimize the time to make that decisions because now you are thinking a multitasking way in a parallel way. Question number four, the four W, H. When do I need to use this knowledge and skills that I acquired today? You will use the knowledge and skills to the student that you acquired today whenever there's a problem with any electrical appliances at home or you have a problem in life to think in a multitasking way. What are the different facts, skills, concept, principles, and disposition related to this knowledge? No problem, dear student. You have dry cells, magnetic forces, Ohm's law, internal resistance, athletic, and all this in physics and science, in math, calculation and solving skills, in IT, understanding and exploring loops, in life skills, nurturing your group profile traits, and in arts and IT, designing and drawing parallel circuits. So let's go now and see a real life example, the detail of this real life extent with the three periods to do it. The topic to cover, always don't tell the students the learning objectives. Tell them the objective in a more real life based team. Example, explore different electronic and or appliances surrounding us that are based on circuits and parallel circuits. If you tell them this, the students will understand because they see those electric appliances daily in their real life, they, they have it. They face these problems every day. But if you tell them, okay, you know, today guys, the learning objective is students explore it when you play the different properties of our circuits. Oh, it's boring again. We're back to learning and this guy is here, is going to have those stuff. And I don't know what do I do with them in my life. And what do I need this physics already? I want to do the English, what do I need the, the chemistry? They have this question, they have this wall that we need to break the wall. That's why I always tell them the real life based theme which covers the learning objectives. The strategies used, E3RR, deductive way, we give them some of the means, we give them some of the objectives, they will find out the other objectives by themselves, by a project, by an activity, grouping techniques, and the most important today, the W4H approach. Resource, internet, laptops, of course, and the venue always we believe in, classroom without borders. It can be the breakout space, your learning shared area, the science lab, the AI lab, the IT lab, you decide, don't forget, 25% of the time, a student must spend only in the classroom. 75% of their time, they must spend it outside the classroom. Step one for our W4H approach. For low achiever students, you train them previously and you explain to them what is the parallel circuits, already differentiation is there. And those four students, low achiever, they will prepare a presentation with your help before, prior to the lesson, and we'll explain in a presentation of 10 minutes uh, the different properties of parallel circuits and we'll build a parallel circuit based basic application in front of them. This will take around 20 minutes. Will be followed by question and answer session conducted by the facilitators. A lot of strategies you can use here, we put them, and don't forget we're using many subjects while we are uh, uh, exploring with them the W4H approach, IT, life skills, their learner profile traits, art and design, math and science, not only science and physics. Step two, a student will participate in different heterogeneous groups 
of five students per group and will be given different defective electrical and electronic appliances to explore and find out why they are not operational and fix them. The four low achievers will help and assist shadow teaching. And we're doing, we're doing the uh, E3RR2. We're exploring, experiencing most of the studies that we uh, covered before. It's there within the W4H approach. Step number three. The five groups of students will be labeled as follows. The why group, the where group, the how group, the what group, and the when group. Every group will search the internet and find out the properties of the why, the when, the when, the where, the how, and what, with the help of the four low achiever students, period two, 30 minutes. Step number four, general brainstorming session. Every group will explain the why, the when, the where, the how, and what, using a PowerPoint, Pezzi, Keynote, you decide that, that's not a problem. And this will take period two, 15 minutes, and period three, 15 minutes. Step five, deduct, prepare collectively the general properties of the parallel circuits. Students will discover and learn about the circuits while doing the inquiry and research. Later, while brainstorming and explaining, they will finalize their conclusion and deductions process guided, of course, and conducted by us, by the facilitator, facilitated by us. Victors will be announced based on peer or step assessment. The follow achievers will be the final judges of the best group, and they will prepare in advance a rubric so that they can judge based on that rubric. Dear colleagues, the W4H real life based learning, one subject called knowledge approach. This is a real life example and real life approach, which is the W4H approach. The second one, second approach called the say, make, write to instructional approach or strategy. What do we mean by say, make, write to, which is another approach that will guide us and that will help us create the one subject called knowledge approach and pedagogical today approach worldwide. For example, what do I do? It's very simple. I have say, I have some students, they have skills of speaking and saying, as we all know, okay? So I divided my uh, class into different groups, uh, homogeneous groups first, three groups, one or two low achievers groups, one or two middle achievers group, one or two uh, high achievers group. Let's say in this lesson, it's better for some students to understand we are speaking to low achievers. So automatically I, put, I give them an activity where there is saying or speaking activity. Another activity was in writing activity for another high achievers group, middle achievers, let's say making activity. Later on, what I'm going to do, once they finalize the activities and they deduct the learning objectives and the means that they need to explore and they need to acquire, I do flexible grouping. I regroup them again, heterogeneously, okay? Mixing them, low achievers, middle and high achievers, and then they will perform and they will do something which is linked to the subject. Example, grocery shopping with mom and uh, dad and make sure that the count summation is accurate by checking the receipt. A real life based, 100% one subject called knowledge. The major learning objective, hidden learning objective are a student explore and manipulate four digit number addition, grade three math. It's integrated with art, music, theater, we see it's one subject called knowledge. The major activity, the major strategy we want to use here is the say, make, write to act the strategy, of course, with other helping activities like deductive way of facilitating, grouping techniques, inquiry project-based learning, real life-based approach, all this, it will help us to reach to our main SMWD. Of course, always classroom without borders. Let's go step by step how we're going to uh, establish this strategy or this approach within our class. Step one, it will take four periods, progressive of course. Students will film individually their mom or dad shopping and paying the addition after they check the receipt and making sure it all is correct. An assignment given to the students before one week of period one. All the students divided in groups of five will watch the clips one minute maximum each, and start understanding why it's crucial to know and master the art of addition, the why, don't forget. 
Later on, a question and answer session will be conducted by the facilitator to initiate within the students some of the means and let them discover and explore progressively the learning objectives and the other means, deductive way of teaching Piaget. This will be period one, 45 minutes. As you see, a lot of subjects are involved again. Film, math skills, art, public skills, it's all there. Science, math, it's all there. Art, group two, step two. Groups will be partitioned as follows, as we said in the previous slide. Groups one on two will be assigned an activity in which they need to say and articulate verbally the additions. Those are the middle achievers. Example, of course, an example, you can mingle it the way that you want based on the topic that you are conveying to them. Group three will be assigned an activity in which they will write the addition of different operations on paper, based worksheets, and later input on Excel and make sure the addition is correct. Again, IT is included, low achievers. Group four and five will be assigned to generate and to make a board game based on those numbers and those additions. This is more art included with math. This is for high achievers. All homogeneous grouping and SMWD approach. And always, of course, let's not forget the fun illusion approach. They think they're having fun, but in real life, they are learning. They are acquiring knowledge and skills needed for them to improve their life. Step three, the five groups will be mingled in heterogeneous five groups again, and every group will be assigned to prepare a role play scene where one student will be the cashier, another student will be the mom or dad, and another student will be the son or daughter. In that role play, the son or daughter will check the addition on the receipt while the dad and mom will pay after they pay the cash to the cashier. The other two students will prepare the scene and engineer it, and one of them will film the scene. All the students will watch the scene recording and afterwards, the facilitator will ask two exit questions and will make sure that all the students without exception met and exceeded the learning objectives and explored all the needed means. The SMWD strategy and approach, real life based learning, one subject called knowledge. Another important approach is the choices approach. In choices approach, let's say I want to teach them math. And as we know, math is very challenging because most of the students, don't know for some reason, they find math very difficult, which is a very simple subject, but they find it difficult. Math, how can I do it in a one subject called knowledge approach within the choices instructional approach? I need to mingle math to give him some more spices and pepper with science, math and art, math and social studies, math and English language, math and IT. I need to do that and mingle them with those different subjects and give them a choice. But imagine me, I'm giving them a menu. I prepare a menu example. I give it to them and I tell them guys, okay, choose between choice number one, math and science. Choice number two, math and IT. Choice number three, math and art. Choice number four, math and social studies. Choice number five, math and English language. Again, by giving them the menu in this form, I am creating and initiating the wall again between us and the student, the famous wall that they will say no automatically, they will rebel because within generations, they don't like any more subjects. They don't like math, they don't like science, they don't like English, they don't like it. There's something in them. They want to see, they want to see really whatever I am learning today, what's in it for me? That's the, best, the question they ask always. How can this help me? the W4H. That's why I will prepare for them another menu and we're going to see how now in this example. The topic to cover, why circles and triangles play a crucial importance in our daily life. Again, this topic covers the learning objectives. The student identify equilateral as yourself, scaling acute right, and imagine you give them all those objectives already, they will be, um, uh, automatically generating a wall because number one, they will not understand what's equilateral, what's uh, triangle, similar, congruent, another, what is this? It's, uh, I don't get it. Where do I find this in my real life? But when you tell them, guys, you know, today we're going to see why circles and triangles play a crucial importance in our daily life. I will give you a menu. 
You choose one of the topics and we'll work on that. We're not going to a menu with the subject names. They will not be interested. We're going to see now how we're going to give them a menu. So this use, of course, learning by doing, grouping techniques, inquiry by learning, the choices. We're going to explore now in this example, a real life-based approach, fun illusion approach, shadow teaching, mutual collaborative planning. So let's see how we're going to give them a menu which will attract them to the class. Choices. I will give them a menu. Of course, you can design it in a more uh, beautiful way that's just uh, topics. In that menu, you will have different choices because don't forget, if the student will choose and based on his choice, he will conduct the, the learning and uh, acquiring process of knowledge and skills, then he will be more convinced because internally he selected whatever he wants to go on and explore more. That's why I always give them a menu. The menu will be, will have six simple uh, topics that are linked to real life. Nature and marine life, robotics and IT, surrealism painting, impressionism painting, cinema, the word wonders. All this, of course, linked to and architecture linked to my uh, today's topic. Why do I need triangles and circles and what are the importance of triangles and circles in real life? So step one, the facilitator will distribute to the students a menu to choose from. The different items of this menu are as followings. Again, don't forget, no mention of math, no mention of science, no mention of subject names. Just the different pillars of real life based one subject called knowledge. That's very, very important. And always remind them the real life based team which covers the what, what are we going to learn today or the learning objective, why circles and triangles play a crucial importance in our daily life. Let's see now step number two. Prior to the lesson, and that's why uh, Education is a mission. We need always to uh, invest more time with our students, prepare them, differentiate with them. That's why it's a mission. And that's why we are the forgotten missionaries of a sacred mission that very few believe in it anymore. But they don't know those, the other ma majority, they don't know that we are the last stronghold between humankind and auto-destruction. God forbid the stronghold is down, it's the end already. So step two, uh, prior to a lesson, the facilitator must train separately for low achievers and facilitate for them the inquiry and acquisition of knowledge and skills related to the learning objective. Shadow teaching, always, it's very, very important. The facilitator will profile, will prepare with the students a rubric to assess those projects once accomplished. Collaborative planning, always collaborative planning. The moment they feel that you are leading them the moment they feel that you are teaching them, they will rebel. They will not listen to you. Maria Montessori. While preparing mutual the rubric, the students will acquire some knowledge and skills related to the learning objectives and will explore some of the means, but not all of them. The remaining means, they will acquire them with its related knowledge and skills while doing their projects. You see here, you have many strategies, the choices, of course, strategy, shadow teaching, deductive way, project-based learning, real life-based, fun and approach, explore, experience, engage steps in the E3 RR milieu. And of course, many subjects are involved. Art and design, math, science, film, IT, collaborative planning is there, it's all there. In education, dear colleagues, as we all know, one plus one is never equal to two. Never. That's why there is only one major reality in education. At the end of my period, am I sure that all my students, all of them, without exception, they acquired the appropriate knowledge and skills so that they can improve their life within a PRA approach? If I am sure they've done that, that means I reached my objectives. Step number four. Students will be grouped in different groups of three or four based on their choice from the menu. Everyone is choosing a menu. Of course, homogeneous grouping. And we start exploring this on their internet, their project, 
searching for their project, finding the answers, okay, start doing their projects using the internet, finding out in all those menus what the circles and the triangles has to do with cinema, to do with world wonders, has to do with architecture, because they love and they selected this menu. Step five, a student can ask for appetizers, and here's the fun, don't forget, fun illusion approach, to help them in their projects. Every appetizer will let them lose half a point based on the rubric on 10. But because we believe in positive reinforcement, they can regain this half point as a bonus based on the rubric prepared maturely and previously with the students once they, we see their work and we see what they've done. We continue, step number six. The four low achievers, shadow teachers, will pass by and help the student if they need help, of course. And step number seven, there will be one question and answer session at the beginning of period two, facilitated by the facilitator, where the facilitator will ease the way for the students to reach and meet their learning objectives. Step number eight, all groups will present their projects. The four shadow teachers will assess. Step number nine, the facilitator will conclude by making sure that all the students met and exceeded their learning objectives. He or she will fill in the gaps if needed. Step number 10, victors will be announced. The price will be to be shadow teachers for the next class. This is the choices strategy. As you saw, we uh, had the W4H, we had the choices, and uh, we seen, of course, uh, the second strategy too, which is the SMWD strategies. All those approaches and strategies is going to help us reach the one subject called knowledge, real life-based approach. Thank you very much, all colleagues, for listening to us today. Uh, I'm just, I just want to remind you before starting our question and answer session, our upcoming webinars. We have an op on April 17, the simplicity of beyond differentiated classroom in which we're going to tackle more in depth the differentiated strategies and we're going to see more top notch new different strategies that we're going to use in our classroom. On May 15, we're going to tackle and more in depth go to the multi layers curriculum, the different layers of the multi-layered curriculum. On uh, June 19, 2021, we're going to tackle more the five pillars of differentiation with more details and more novelties there. You can always register via uh, Juan Quan Village, our village's LinkedIn and WeChat account anytime. And of course, uh, uh, we started now a, a group of uh, online debates. The first one will be with an international art expert and specialist Monsieur Serge Malenfant, president of Global Mule Association, in which we're going to discuss, uh, me and him, he will tell us, explain to us the role of art in education. This will take place on March 27, 2021, at 4.30 p.m. Dubai time. There will be the role of art in education, art as a crucial pillar of STEAM's education, art one of the essential catalysts of real life-based learning, art a major originated and originator of different education, art triggering creativity and innovation, art nurturing the 21st century learner profile, about mural arts breaking the wall between the teens and the community, and about mural arts to integrating our youth to be right for today and ready for tomorrow. Special thanks to Juan Quan Village to always hosting and conducting all those important education webinars and interviews for the sake of our great missionaries, you, the great missionaries of education. And thank you all for attending it. For additional questions, you can contact us on the email that you can see on the screen. And now we are ready for your questions. Thank you. Yes. I am ready for the questions, please. Me, Mr. Fuad, and uh, Ms. Aline. Any questions? Sir John? Yes. There's 